Hey everyone, it's Gary Shirk from Coldwell Banker, La Costa Realty. It's February of 2022, and it's time for another Puerto Vallarta real estate market update. And for today's update, I'm joined by my good friend and Coldwell Banker colleague, Nick Valchik. The good thing about having Nick here today is not only is he a very successful and experienced agent, but he's also very analytical and routinely likes to do deep dives into the numbers of the local real estate market here in Puerto Vallarta. So with that, let's go ahead and bring in Nick and we'll we'll take a look at uh, at his update today. Hi, Nick. Hey, Gary. How are you? Thanks for inviting me today. Oh, it's a ple it's a pleasure to have you. Uh, there's a lot of interest in uh, Puerto Vallarta market updates I found, and I know that you've got a lot of good information to share with us. So um, let's uh, let's go ahead and bring up your uh, your presentation and we can just jump right into it. Sure. So um, what I'm going to go through today is some of the general statistics, um, and uh, you've got the document that you can hand out to your clients that goes through all these data by uh, neighborhood, by area, in case they're interested in that. So um, everyone knows it was a crazy, crazy uh, couple of years with COVID, um, and we are still seeing some amazing numbers here in PV. So let's dive right in. Um, you can see here uh, the total dollar volume sales for everything. So this is this includes everything, houses, condos, land, all of it. And um, you can see the little dip uh, in the COVID year, but this is still a massive uh, increase even over 2019. And you can see how the trend has been going since 2016. So we're close to pushing three quarters of a billion dollars. I was going to say, Nick, it's it's almost as if, you know, COVID, I think one thing that COVID did, uh, once we opened back up and got running again, there was just a tremendous demand for travel. And I think we, we took advantage of that. We did. But uh, if I recall, we did a couple of deals, you and I together, where we sold condos sight unseen. Um, you walked through the condo with your video camera and people were buying last year, even from from Canada uh, and, and other parts of, of the world with, uh, with nothing more than a video. Yeah, that's true, that's true. All right, well, let's move on to uh, looking at, at this by the type um, of uh, homes. And uh, we're gonna look at condos today primarily, and this is why. Uh, because condos represent 60% of the whole uh, market here. And you can see how it uh, uh, breaks out by business, commercial, land, and multifamily. I will say that uh, these statistics are taken from the local MLS, and a lot of um, land and uh, multifamily and commercial stuff happens just um, in, within the, the uh, Mexican community. Uh, and they don't go to MLS. So these numbers are not super accurate when it comes to land and multifamily, but they are when it comes to condos and houses. Um, and these numbers are from the MLS. So again, a, a huge number uh, and huge increases over previous years. So what we're gonna look at are uh, the key metrics, number of units sold, the average sold price, and the average dollars per square meter. And as you already know, Gary, I love looking at dollars per square meter. When my clients ask me, uh, well, how much is this thing worth and why? The first thing I go to is, uh, what is the sale price in dollars per square meter? And it's a really good way to uh, break it down in terms of um, by area. And we'll, we'll see that uh, places like Old Town, uh, Central South is what we call it, uh, are much higher on average dollars per square meter than other places that don't have as high of a, a rental demand and uh, or maybe a view or et cetera. So these are the three basics that we're gonna cover. Um, let's take a look at condo sales for uh, 2021. And these <laughs> graphs are gonna look like this. It's crazy. Um, total dollar volume of all areas. And when I say all areas, I'm talking about um, everything from La Cruz and down to um, Boca. And so all the different areas of town is what I'm referring to. And uh, it's a huge increase and it's also a huge increase over the, the uh, five year uh, average. 
One of the other things that we've noticed and you, and you, you can't miss if you drive through town are the number of construction cranes and construction projects that are currently happening. So one of the great things about the MLS data is that we can look at uh, what we call pre-construction. Um, the word's a little bit of a misnomer because it, it's being sold um, before the building is completed, but it's under construction. So that's right. a little distinction that we make here. So um, as you can see, the trend is upwards in all of these, except we, we see this little glitch in the, in the COVID year. So we're looking now at average sold price. And that's a figure that a lot of people like to look at. Now, what's the average price for a condo in, in PV? And that's the number that everybody throws around. And currently, it's $337,000 and 366. And it's a little bit, uh, you know, it, it's like that for any city, any large city or even medium sized city, you're not going to get a great estimation of, um, of price in the neighborhood that you're looking at. You need to go to that that data to find that, but this is all of everything combined. And then you can see how it's broken down by pre-construction as well as by um, existing. And one of the things, uh, Gary, that you know, is that uh, in pre-construction, we see a slightly lower price overall because um, the developer, the builder is offering discounts to purchase prior to it being uh, complete. So that may be one of the reasons why we're seeing a slightly lower price right. here. Yeah, that's an important distinction because, uh, you know, buyers should know that uh, they're they're getting into pre-construction at, uh, uh, at the early pricing uh, with discounts, perhaps sometimes large discounts up to, I've seen 15, I've seen, I've seen 25% in some buildings. And uh, once those once those uh, units are completed, now they go to market value. And so it, they end up being pretty good investments. Absolutely. All right, let's move on to the next slide, which uh, is my favorite um, metric, which is the average dollars per square meter. And again, it's all the areas combined. And we've seen a nice increase since 2016. You know, clients uh, ask, you know how is this going to is this going to appreciate and how is it going to appreciate over time and um, i remember a time uh several years ago where uh real estate agents were saying yeah you know we don't really want to talk about uh you know looking at appreciation over time this is more about having a, a home in mexico and then using it to uh, to bolster your income by renting it out, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But there's a clear pattern here and uh, a 23% increase over five years is decent. Um, certainly it's not the steep curves that we've seen in Canada and the United States, but this is a nice solid um, increase over time. And, and that's good to see. So, yeah, yeah. And, and Nick, I wanted to say uh, you, you're you're right about this. Now, now you have the benefits of these increases that we're seeing, and you the you still have your seasonal vacation home, you know, here in a in a great resort town. Exactly, yeah, best of both worlds. So, um, again, on average, when um, when someone's asking me, well, what can I expect to pay? Um, if this is a metric that's easy to throw out, you know, on average expect to pay $2,482 per square meter. And mm -hmm. it, it certainly helps um, helps figure out where you wanna go from there. And then once you start looking at other areas, we can say, well, you know, if we're gonna go to the hotel zone, um, we can get down to 18 and $1,900 a square meter. And you're still close to the beach, you're close to everything, but look at the savings you're getting versus being in a $3,500 per square meter old town. Right. So um, it's a nice metric to, to keep in the back of your head. So um, there's a couple slides here where we look at the, the major areas. This doesn't represent every single area in the, in the Bay Area, but these are the, the major ones where we do business. We do most of our business uh, with expats. And um, so these are increases over the five-year period from 2016 to 2021. 
And, um, you know, each one of them is a telling story. <laughs> We've seen South Shore and uh, Central South, which is uh, Old Town, have massive increases over, over time, but they're all showing a nice, healthy jump. Yeah, so those three big bars, they were uh, Hotel Zone, Central South, and I see, oh, and South Shore, yeah. South Shore, yeah. This is, this is total sales volume in dollars. So this doesn't just represent um, more properties being sold. It also represents the increase in price. And certainly in South Shore, where land is limited, not a lot of new construction has been going on over these, these years because there's just no place to build. The increase is coming from uh, higher demand and lower supply. Yeah, yep. And this uh, same is true when we look at average uh, dollars per square meter by area. And um, you know the, the graph speaks for itself. We're seeing a nice increase. Certainly if I was uh, interested in investing, I would wanna see the bar on the right being much higher than the bar on the left because yeah. this shows that my home is appreciating in value. And then what, uh, we're also looking at average sold price. So um, this is going to vary a little bit. Um, we're seeing in Bucerias the bar on the right being a little lower, but what we've seen in Bucerias is just a huge amount of new construction. And when I looked at Bucerias in specific, I saw that the average size of condos has come down. So um, I think that accounts for some of the reason why uh, back in 2016, the average Bucerias condo was 335 and now it's 274. There's just a lot more construction and a lot of it is much smaller, even though you're looking at a higher dollars per square meter. Yeah, I see what you mean, yep. So this is a really interesting metric um, that goes back to my comment about how many construction cranes you see in construction in general. Um, 2021 uh, 21 just saw a huge uh, building boom here, just a massive building boom. And th this number bears it out, 822 units uh, over the previous couple of years, or 2019, 2020, they're almost identical. It's, it's a construction boom that's going on here. Existing construction, we also saw, you know, healthy sales here. Um, rather than comparing it to the previous year, which is COVID year, you know, I just took uh, the average of these five years and it's still a decent 38% increase over that five year average. Hmm. Um, average dollars per square meter in pre-construction. Um, again, that's going to, uh, I don't know why the 2020 number was so high, but the one thing I can point out is that this graph is somewhat misleading um, in that the, the variance between 2,400 and 2,500 is not that huge of a difference, but it looks much more pronounced on this graph. Uh, 2020 had a very limited inventory, and so whatever was for sale under pre-construction might have been whatever was available and it was at a higher price. So don't let the graph fool you here. These are not huge differences, even from the previous year, 2019. They're, they're very minor. I see, okay. And ex existing construction, average dollars per square meter. Again, this is something you wanna see as an investor and as a homeowner, a nice solid line moving uh, upwards from 2016. And I think that brings us to the individual area statistics, which we're not gonna go over. We can do that for another time, or you can hand that out to your clients on an as asked for basis. Yes, yeah, that sounds good. And I, I wanna say, uh, uh, like, like Nick mentioned, uh, there is a, a lot more uh, data that he's compiled. We'll, we're gonna do s some other videos to show that. We can make that data available to you. Um, uh, as usual, I'll have my contact information here. I'm also going to include Nick's contact information 
in the description of this video. Feel free to talk directly with him as well uh, if you have any questions or you need some clarifications uh, or, or for whatever. Um, well, Nick, thank you very much for showing us that today. Uh, it was very, very informative. Thanks, Gary. So that's all for now, everyone. We'll catch you in the next video. Adios, amigos.